Pipeline caching can help reducing build time by allowing the output or the downloaded dependencies from one run to be reused in later runs, allowing to remove or reduce the cost and the time to recreate or redownload those assets. Let's see how to enable and use caching in Azure Pipelines in this 3 minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet teach you something and all in just 3 minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos like this. Today we talk about how we can reduce the time our Azure pipelines take to run using caching. And caching is especially useful in situations where we have to download our dependencies over and over again for each run of our pipeline, because this is usually a very time consuming process involving hundreds or thousands of network calls. When it comes to Azure pipelines, and especially if you're using the Microsoft hosted agents, the environments are destroyed as soon as the pipeline execution ends. So whenever you start a new run, you are on a new environment that has been created afresh just for you. And so it contains only the executables and the services that that CI service needs. And this is when you want to use caching. Remember that caching is effective in improving the pipeline execution time, only if the time needed to restore and save the cache is actually less than recreating the outputs from scratch or redownload those dependencies. Because of this, there may be scenarios in which activating the cache can be negatively impacting your time. So let's start the clock and get into it. Caching is added to a pipeline using the cache pipeline task. The cache task has two required inputs, key and path. The path should be set to the directory to populate the cache from, on the save and to store files on the restore. In my case, I just use a variable over here, which is a system variable that also tells NuGet where to store or retrieve the packages. The key instead should be set to some unique identifier for the cache you want to restore or save. I have the literal NuGet, the agent OS, which comes from the system variables, and then I use the package.log.json file. When you specify a file, the engine uses the hash of the content of the file. So if the content changes, a new key is created and you will not restore the wrong version of the cache. As you can see, I can also specify some other patterns. In this case, I want to use the packages.log.json, but not if it's in the bin or in the LBJ folder. There's also another parameter, the restore keys. This is useful to fall back to another key in the case that a key couldn't be found. When a cache step is encountered during a run, the task will first try to restore the cache based on the provided inputs. If no cache is found, then the steps completes and the next step in the job is run. And after all the steps in the job have run and assuming a successful job status, there is a special save cache step for each of the restore cache steps. If we take a look at it, we can see that this is the first run. And so the cache engine calculate the key and trying to find if there's anything in the cache with that key. But again, since it's the first one, there is a cache miss, which means that our new get restore has to run. We can see here all the gets and all the other things that a new get restore task does. And after all the build, test, and other steps have completed, there is this automatically injected task, calculates the key. There is a cache miss because nothing is present yet in the cache. And so the package repos is uploaded and eventually the cache item is created. If we take a look at the second run instead and we take a look at the cache step, we can see that there is a cache hit. And so the task downloads the item from the cache and save it on the agent machine and the new get command, we will not have the get. And in fact, we only have the check and compatibility steps. And finally, also the cache save step is much smaller because the cache didn't change. And so this step just checks if the cache is present or not. There are some scenarios in which the successful restoration from a cache should cause a different set of steps to be run. For example, a step that installed dependencies may be skipped if those dependencies have been retrieved from the cache. We can use these cache hit var parameter and we can pass to it this variable, which is actually stored over here. Whenever the cache is hit, this variable will be set to true. And then we can use that variable in a condition statement for the steps we want to skip. In this case, I want to skip the NuGet command if we hit the cache. So the condition for this will be not equal that variable true. 
So if that variable is set to true, this step will not run. Lastly, it is worth noting that caching is currently available in CI and deployment jobs, but it's not available in the classic release pipelines. We can analyze how the cache works. The first column is a null cache situation, and the NuGet restore command takes about 39 seconds to execute. The one in the middle instead is the cached version of the pipeline, but it's a first run, so there is a cache miss. We add the overhead of trying to restore from the cache, but also of saving the values to the cache, which brings us to a total of 49 seconds. So in a cache miss situation, we add some time to our build. In the last example, there is a cache hit. The restore step takes longer than before, but then the NuGet restore takes less of half of the time to run because it doesn't have to get the packages, but just to verify them. And also the save in the cache is much faster because as we've seen, it doesn't have to save anything since the cache didn't change. And this brings us to a total of about 35 seconds, which in this case is not much of a difference from the 39 seconds we started with, but yet we can see the difference. So what do you think about the Azure Pipeline caching system? Do you use it? Do you plan to use it? Do you see it benefits? Let me know in the comment section below so we can discuss about it. Once again, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.